There we go. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us. I'm Gatesy. This is Fall From Iron. Uh, we're just trying something new out today because we can. Why not? So this is our first pilot episode of Forged AM, Milesy. This was all your idea. You should be doing this. Yeah, no, but I, li you I like you taking... Here. Hang on. I, I, li I like, I like uh, you taking the lead because then I can be the silly child and just muck around normally. But my partner in oh, crime is not here again today. Jazzy's not here. I know. <laughs> he's probably slightly over a hangover or something like that. But before yeah. we sort of start chatting about whatever, I've got to do my usual thing at the beginning of every stream. Don't forget, guys, please do drop a like on the stream. It really does help the channel out tremendously. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit that bell icon to be notified of any new content as and when we upload it. That's that bit out of the way. Joining us, as you can see there at the bottom what, of your screen, Royalty, royalty, royalty. Yeah. yeah. He's uh, Bruton's right, finest. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, <laughs> joking Jake. I'm joking, Jake. <laughs> terrible, terrible. <laughs> How are you, Jake? Yeah, yeah. Not too bad at all. I'm not in my usual sort of self. I'm an anti-deliverable fan. Look at the state of this. Look at that. Oh. Look at that. It's... <laughs> but uh, I've got to deal with it. It's a bed. Um, I can't lie. I woke up about 20 minutes ago, laid in bed, slopped out of bed, put some clothes on, and gates has gone, um, and came back oh. on the bed. Uh, so... <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> it's been a fun morning for me. Where's Gatesy gone? Yeah. He, 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 he's been sick from that Liverpool picture, I think, mate. When we was off air, he said that, didn't it? But no, um, so so it's tipping down where you are, but you, you, you're you going out and doing something, are you? Or are you still going to do it anyway? Yeah, well, yeah we're, going to, well, we're going to Bath near us for, for, for the day. I'm going to go and beat my auntie at Crazy Golf. Um, Very nice. And tell her that West Ham are going to be superior this season yet again. And here he comes again. Is he here? Oh. This is live, YouTube lads. Yeah, and I know exactly. exactly, exactly. But no, that should be good, mate. I, li I like Crazy Golf. He's back. Hey! hey. What I didn't realise is, is whilst I'm sitting here, unbeknownst to me, I'm I'm on a tablet. I'm not on me me PC as you probably worked out. I'm in the front room on me tablet. Unbeknownst to me, in the background, this thing was doing an update, wasn't it? And of course, it's updated and gone. Oh, it's now installing. Oh, the <laughs> and we're live. Yeah. Um, what what could possibly go wrong? What did I miss? Um, Jake's much. going to play. Jake's going to play crazy golf today. Oh. Are you? Who are you playing against? Is it the old man? No, the auntie. She said it's going to be it's going to be it's rain. Oh blimey! You got? Are you going to let her win? Uh, what do you think? <laughs> How are you the going to come to me? Oh no, oh no. We play for lunch. That's what Nando's. That's what we play for. Cheeky Nando's. Chicken, and chips. chicken and chips. Take cheeky Nando's. How was the cricket yesterday, uh, Gatesy? Very good. Very good, very, um, very good event, event, to be fair. The Southern Brave uh, one. I watched that. Sky Go, Sky Go, the Southern Brave one. Let's go. I guess that, that is going to be your team, I guess, isn't it? In the final, in the final. In the women's and the men's. Yeah, they've done really well. I mean, we, I'm obviously an Oval Invincibles man myself, because obviously I went, to, I went to school literally behind the Oval, I think I probably told you before. Uh, so I'm obviously an Oval Invincibles um, supporter. So obviously the ladies team got the to the got final, to which they're playing today. Is it today? Is I've it? Oh yeah, of course it's just... That's me. I'll log out. You got your earphones? Oh, we'll carry on. <laughs> and we're I live. I, did, I didn't tell you to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, but oh. yeah, no, it was a really good. Um, oh, hang on, he's, he's back. It's all right. He, he he didn't get offended and clear off. It's all right. I think he might have put his ear earpiece in or something. It there we go. That's all right. Is that better? Let's see. Yeah. No, I'm not getting an echo. That's brilliant. It's just so, we've just got another. We've got another feedback now in the gates here. So who's next going to be for me? <laughs> all them bees in the fridge, uh, Malsey. Where are they? 
No, no for, for if I am. <laughs> shall, shall I start? Shall I He's start? In the bar. <laughs> oh, this is live. Oh, look at us, that's, that's, that's Look at that. Or shall I start with a cheeky Jaeger bomb somewhere? Oh, God. <laughs> look at this. This is not a good advertisement for uh, AM drinking. <laughs> um. If you want to join my alcohol awareness course, you're more than welcome to join after this show. It's live on. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> so, it's to be guys, we've been we've been chatting for about the last five minutes. Should we get into some football topics now? This was we discussed yesterday when when you um, floated this idea, Molsey. So, obviously, we're a West Ham fan YouTube channel, so we're going to talk about West Ham. We make no apologies for that, but we're going to spread the net out a little bit wider and we're going to talk about stories, the wider footballing world. So I'd like to start, if I may, with the big news that PAI Capital, Pi Capital, whatever you want to call them, have now had the endorsement, not only of Rio and Anton Ferdinand, but now of Tony Cotty. Now, does that change anyone's perspective on things i don't know i've i've got my opinions over to you gentlemen and you guys in the live chat if you want to get involved in this please do we'll get your comments up on screen and we'll obviously talk as and when anything pops up if there's anything that you you sort of bring up to the fore that we think is uh something we want to discuss we will so go for it guys milesy you first tony cotty getting involved with pie uh it's it's good that they're they're, they're going down. The, I think they learnt their first mis mistake of getting Rio in. I've got a lot of time for Anton, um, but that doesn't change the matter either. If they come in and got a person with experience with a director of football role or an experience of running the club, like in previous clubs, I don't know. I'm just thinking of a oh, I'm trying to think of a well run well run club. But you know you know what I mean. Who's the one who left Arsenal all them years ago? Under oh, David Dean. Do you know what I mean? Someone like that. If they come out and went, yeah, we've got David Dean on board. We're just the investment. We're not getting involved. David Dean and works with David Moyes or whatever. Tony Cotty will be director. Um, they're going to run the club. I think that sells sells it for me more better. And you let Pie Pie Face, whatever you want to call them, do all make all their money what they want. In, in every, yeah, on anything else. Like that would be fine with me. I'd be totally different, and then and then I'll be all over it. As long as they can prove the funds and they're letting experienced football men run the run the football club, I'll be all over it. But we're getting we're slowly getting more closer. How about yourself, Jake? I don't know about this whole situation. I thought the whole Rio Ferdinand thing really did annoy the West Ham fan base, and I think I agree with that. It's really annoyed them about that. I think obviously Tony Cotty, West Ham legend, and it's probably floated a few more people's boats. It's good, it's good, but I haven't really gone to be honest. I was out all day, so I didn't really see the breaking news until I got back at night, to be honest with you. But um I just went, Yeah, that's cool. I think I think they've really messed up with the Anton um with the with the Rio Ferdinand side of things. The issue that I've got with it is that They've put a five hundred million pound bid on the table. It's been rejected. Now they're f finalising whatever they're doing with, with a second bid. Let's see that six hundred million pounds it gets accepted. Then I think it was Nikki that said it. Does that then mean that a hundred million pounds is then taken off the transfer budget? That's the issue I've got of it. Them going up in price from their first bid. It seems like they were happy to pay five hundred million pounds. It's been rejected. I can't see Sullivan selling for any less than eight hundred million pounds. Personally, I don't think he's going to budge. I don't think they'll go up to eight hundred million pounds. But if they do, then that's three pounds in pounds substantially off of their plans, which means we're still not, which we're still not going to have any money to spend unless they've got a bottomless pit of money. In my opinion, I just don't know with them. It's they haven't helped themselves with the talk sport malarkey. That was a waste of ten minutes, personally. Um, but, but yeah, I just, I just don't know where I'm at with it, personally. Yeah, I, I mean, the thing is for me is that what you got to understand is that this lot are investors. 
they're going to want a return on whatever money they put in. They're going to want it back with a bit of interest. You don't you, no No investor is going to invest in something where they're going or they, they plan on losing money. Are they? If you knew if someone turned around to, to either of you two and said, I tell you what, I've got a really good investment for you. And your return is going to be minus X amount of pounds. You'd both turn around and go, no. So they're going to want a return on their investment. Now, how are they going to get the return? I, I don't know. I'm not a businessman. I don't know what their long-term plan is. And, and that's kind of the problem for me because there's not really been any clarity. Everything that I've heard has centered around the stadium which, don't get me wrong, is a big issue for an awful lot of West Ham fans. But in my opinion, the first thing I want to know is what are your plans for the first team? What's your budget for the playing for the incomings? What is your plan? You know, is David Moyes going to be your manager? Because let's, let's not forget, an awful lot of people that take over football clubs will have their own ideas. They might look at David Moyes and say, he's not a big name. I want a glamour name. Let's get in a just throwing a name out there for an example. I know he's at another club, but say a Carlo Ancelotti, a Jose Mourinho, that, a, a sort of like a big name manager, if you will. Um, what are your plans for the training facilities at Rush Green? We know that the, the training facilities at Rush Green are poor by League One standards, let alone Premier League standards. Then, fair enough, then I might want to sort of know what you're going to do with regards to the stadium, but. They come, they come third behind those two things, in my opinion. How about you, chaps? I will have to shoot off, lads. Apologies, but cheers That's for right, having me on. Appreciate I've you coming. <laughs> cheers, guys. Cheers, Take Jazz, care, Andy. Take, oh, take care, Jake. See ya. Jazz, you've obviously just turned up. So uh, just sort of going back a, a pace or two, Tony Cotty's obviously got involved in this Pi Capital crowd. Um, does that make any difference to you? Has that changed your perspective? You know, do you view it a bit differently now because of his involvement? Not really. I think the issue here is that I think Pi Capital will be better than the current owners, but not to the level that we need to push regularly into the top six. I think what, what stands out within this group is, I know you can't mention any numbers, but they're not talking like we want to hear from them, they're not mentioned the training ground, the facilities, the, their views on, on, on kind of the scouting department, proper director of football. So they're, they're just all they're saying is we're going to improve your match day experience in, in and around the ground. And then they're not really committing anything in terms of what they like to invest in. And okay, we don't want exact numbers, but you know, will it be better than what it is now? Year in, you know, all we want to hear is that they'll invest what is required in order to get the club into top six every season. And you only make fo money in football as an owner at the end when you sell it, not year on year. And you need a lot of money to buy a club and a lot of money to put into it regularly. You know, you need to be really wealthy, especially in the premiership. And these, and that guy, the owner, I mean, we've caught out his lies already. So obviously people who lie, I'm not going to be good people. I know a lot of people in business are like that. They are very shady characters. I know that. That's how they make their money. That's up to them. But I, and, and I think they keep saying that the I think the only money they'll put into the club will be what they generate, which is what the current owners are doing. You know, that's not the way you get into the top four, top five. And no. especially at the beginning, you, you put so much money in, not Chelsea, that you get to a level where the club itself attracts big sponsorship. You get money from Champions League or Europa. I mean, we ain't even got a sponsor for the ground, you know, things like that. And if you look at our shirt sponsors over the years, they're, they're nothing. The money we're getting from them is nothing compared to the deals Chelsea, Man U, Man City, Liverpool get. I think mm. Liverpool, I mean, some of them, even from their training kit sponsors like Man United, they get more than if you put two clubs together like West Ham and Palace, what they get from their shirt sponsors, really. No, not for yeah. me, mate. Not for me. I, I, not for me. You can't change owners like uh, like clothes like we do. You can't. It's a very big move. It, it, it can wreck or make your life for the next 15, 20 years like we know. They will mm. be better than these owners, 
but I think the owner's too shady and the money will not be enough what they're going to put in. Yeah. For so, me. so, so, Charles, you may have missed it. So, let's, I've just given it an, an argument's sake. Um, Gates is correct. Let's just, for example, David Dean. They went, we've approached David Dean. He's going to manage the, the football side of it. He'll, we'll provide all the money. We'll get, for example, a Tony Cotty, someone who knows the club as a director of football. And we'll let David Moyes run things. Would that change your mind at all? If they say they're going to improve on the team and stuff like that, and they get someone in with a football background experience, you never. If they've got all this money, mate, they can chuck the money at that person as well. Do you know what I mean? I, I, don't, I don't think I don't think they've got enough money to to make us what we want us to be. I don't think that they're not wealthy enough. I don't think, with good respect, I don't think they're the way they're okay, coming across know. their background. And the and and the bit on the owner lying, that's not a good start. We we're not silly. That that was a lie, that statement. At least if you're gonna lie, speak to a West Ham fan like me and I'll make it sound true. That's what the bit about start. where he's been a lifelong yeah. fan or it, fan since eighty six or trying, no, trying to buy trying to buy a ticket from the Chouts in the mid eighties when you oh, couldn't get a ticket. Yeah. Oh, come on, mate. Yeah. That's no, that's a lie. The Rio Ferdinand is a big bodge up than trying to get through um, the Bosch Bosch guy. That's that's three things I can just remember top of my head, and we don't even know who they are. That's not a good start. Not not for me, mate. Not for me. I think Tony's in it because Tony believes they're going to be better than the current owners. But for me, it's going to be five percent better. That's that's not enough to get us to the next level, mate. So, well, just just to mention that you mentioned that. If I can just wind back a little bit, and this is actually mm -hmm. a comment from my brother. Um, he makes the comment that he's not too sure that Tony Cotty's impartial. He believes that Golden Sullivan binned him from pre-match chat. Tony Cotty is not a businessman. Some moody foreigners who don't have the readies. No thanks. Not interested in the slightest. So my question on that statement is, do you think that this is possibly Tony Cotty getting involved? You know, that maybe there's a personal agenda against Golden Sullivan? I don't know. No, Tony's been involved in the past in one or two takeovers that didn't quite come to fruition really so I know he was involved in the Icelandics but they pushed him out if you read his book at the end he's yeah. quite bitter about that he said I, yeah. got, I got them to the table that I didn't make any money out of it Tony Cotty one thing I want to say with respect he is money driven has been in his life when you look at his career from the mid 80s he was one of the few players at West Ham that was bright enough to negotiate his own contracts without an agent or not much of an agent and he did okay he 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 had good car sponsorship deals. He done well, and that's the way he should be. But when you look at Alan Dickens' life, Mark Ward's life, they didn't have a clue. They go, "Oh, we just love football. We didn't care what we earned. We never went into the manager's office. Whatever John gave, we took." Tony was opposite. He used to go in there, and he kind of was quite bright, and he should be. He was quite bright, so he'll get a little bit out of this. And whatever he made back then, perhaps he just needs one more chunk to make his life and give some onto his kids. I understand that. So, like you said, when you, if you get involved with these people, that normally means you're not with the current owners. You can't be. So, yeah, you're right. He's probably fallen out of favour. He's not there on match days anymore, perhaps. I've not seen him or, or aware of that he is. Um, I mean, people like Marlon Harewood are. You see them, Ray Stewart. Yeah. Um, so, perhaps that, that's one of the reasons. Yeah, everyone um, needs to take care of themselves. I understand that, yeah. So, on Dave and X's podcast, I don't know if you've uh, whether I added it or you've um, listen to it. So he was mentioning about Sky, he was mentioning about that and he said the one good thing though, it's a blessing in disguise that he's left Sky is now he can go to watch the three o'clock games over West Ham with his family. Oh. And then, uh, um, but that's what sort of put me off. Now he's involved in this. Yeah, I know he could yeah. probably get invited to hospitality, like if someone who he knows is rich and he's got their box or the hospital. But I don't think they're going to touch him with a barge bomb no, now, now, no. now this has come out. Do you know what I mean? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the, the thing what I'm more worried about is obviously all this, the protest on, this is sort of linked, to, we're, we're probably going to touch on this tomorrow in our preview show, but all these protests, I am all for protest. The, the board have, have done crap, but the window's not shut yet. If we do it, the Man United game at home, which is after the window shut, because even next Saturday, our next our home game after that, the window is still open. And I just don't want that negativity, which I understand, affecting on the players. Like, I know there's going to be a few chants probably on Monday. Like, like, like mm. Jazz, you you heard me. I think you recorded for most of it. The, the f we were behind the team and making that point at the same time that we had the Hammers United banner just in front of us, didn't we, Jazz? But, like, we... 
I just don't want this turning into Burnley 2.0 at the moment. We've just had mm. a fantastic result at Newcastle. I don't know about you guys, but I've just had a smile. I know, Gatesy, you've been away as well. But I've just had a smile on my face. I had the West Ham Fan TV thing on the Friday. Yeah. I had a great day on Sunday. Obviously, meeting Jazz as well. Meeting all the people face to face. Like, it was an amazing day. And I've just been on a high. And I just don't want Monday night to be up there and then be down there just before kickoff. Do you, just, do you understand what I mean? Mm. Yeah, we had been a bit down because of the window leading up to the match, but uh, Miles is right. Once that day started, even the night before my journey going up there, I was in match day zone. Like the players, I wasn't thinking about the owners. We were on a high. We had such a laugh on that day. And we, we weren't negative on the day. And then, you obviously, Monday starts, Tuesday starts, and again, we haven't bought anyone. And we, again, we're thinking about the board. So hopefully, on, when match day starts, we are clearing our thoughts and positive. But yeah, there's a good chance um, there, there will be some negativity in and around the ground. And and the worry is that you go 1-0. I mean, this team under David goes 1-0 down, and, and rightly so, we forget. We're not worried. We come back so often. So hopefully mm. we go 1-0 down. We don't quite get too negative in and around the ground and begin to clap and cheer them back on until they're back in the game. But so, yeah. yeah. This, See, is, the thing this is where I'm at with it, guys. What Martin yeah. said here is exactly what where I'm at. I'm just hoping that there's no toxicity, no negativity that's being transmitted from us in the stands down to the guys on the pitch. We need to get behind the players for every single minute of every single game. You know, I'm not saying that you don't sort of like give them a little bit of a hard time if they, you know, miss a, an open goal or, or things like that. You know, that that's what happens in games of football and, and all players know that they're going to get a little bit of stick if they don't do the fundamentals. But, you know, we we want, to, you know, we, we need to be supporting the lads. And, you know, exactly the last little statement, if buyers come in, why don't they do it all behind closed doors? And, you know, when I think of, certain takeovers that have happened down the years, a lot of it you don't really hear about until it's pretty much signed, sealed and delivered. And yet this has all been played out in the in the media arena. And it just seems a little bit, I, I don't know, sort of like, it just seems a little bit undignified in my opinion. What about yourselves? Josh, do you want to go? Yeah, it's... Um... It's kind of unprofessional, and if you remember, we first kind of heard about it through um, what's his name, the Bosch guy again, top of my head. Uh, Tom oh, Skinner. To Tom that, Skinner, yeah. That so they used his channel, <clears throat> and if you if you're thinking these are quite clever people, they've been in business a while, but mm. some of the things they're doing is just not professional. The average punter down a road, you know, knows how to sort of carry yourself, how to do a little bit of a proper thing like that. I'm just a bit, yeah, I don't get it. I mean, it can only be that they're trying to pr uh, bring the price down, aren't they, really, by using us, saying that if we make it bad enough at the ground, start doing the Burnley things again. I think yeah. that's what they're trying to make us do, really. And, and that's not in the best interest of the club, is it, really? You know? And in an ideal scenario, they probably want us relegated this season so they can buy us for 300 next season. And is that what we really want for our club? You know, sometimes mm, you never come up no. again. We've been lucky under Sam that we came up. We've seen clubs like Sheffield Wednesday never come up again. They used to be a huge team, you know, and QPR, QPR, Portsmouth. We don't even know. Do you know, one I, on I look at and I, I worry about, uh, you know, sort of like I, I, you guys remember when Blackburn were taken over? And Sam Allardyce was the manager then, and they, that fair enough, they were never challenging for sort of like you know Europe in table, weren't they? The other, they were but they were they were safe. They were like a tenth place, pretty much year on year, and and these chicken farmers sort of walked in and said, "Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that." They sacked an established Premier League manager within weeks of walking through the door. They put in one of his coaches who was so far out of a depth, it, it, it just wasn't true. And they were relegated fairly quickly thereafter and they've never been seen in the Premier League since. And I believe they're still there. They're still owned by the, the Venkies. Yeah, yeah. I, and, I, th I think but, not the majority. I think, I think other people have took, I think they're still the majority shareholder. I think other hmm. people have like saved them. But yeah, I, I agree. Uh, it, it, it's mad, mate. It's absolutely mad. Like when you think of like other teams, like I just mentioned there, Nottingham Forest, Swindon, Oldham, 
look how much they yeah. like, I know Bolton, Bolton, Bol- yeah, Bol- Bolton. Yeah, 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 like I used to love a trip to the Reebok. That, that was a great little, little way. We didn't used to do well, but I used to love them them sort of ventures. But no, it's yeah, wow, yeah, Coventry. That's, yeah, that's one that also concerns me because much like Coventry, we don't own the stadium. Now I don't know all of the legal. I don't all know all of the small print, but exactly what Kent's just said there. You know they've only just gone back to the Rico Arena or whatever it's called now. I think I think it's called something else. Coventry um, uh, Community Arena uh, Stadium. Yeah, so it really it trips off the tongue. Yeah. <laughs> but no, but no, like like I said, we, we this show is just a pilot, and we've we've talked about the take the the takeover thing. But this is what they want. They want all the channels talking about it. They want all the podcasts. They want oh, they've talk succeeded. Sport that, like, that, like, they've done what they've done. But do you think, realistically, this is... I, I don't think they're going to sell until 2023 when all that money, yeah. money's gone, where they don't have to. But do you think this is now opening more doors for other owners to come in? Or do you think it could get any worse than what GSB are? I think it's opening doors... They, if they had a bit more money than I think they have, then you start the bidding at a reasonable, reasonable amount, and you get the owners really thinking about it. Really, um, I think it's been around the four hundred million mark and a bit more, perhaps. So maybe you need to go in a bit higher if you're serious about it. But I think perhaps the damage has been done through the media channels, really. And yeah, I, I can't see this one going anywhere. To be fair, I mean, Tony John joining it has surprised me. Does that mean there's more legs in it? I don't know. I mean. They're going to have to stump up a bit more cash. And the more cash they stump up for it, the less we're going to get at the end of it, really. And Mm. Philip Beard on TalkSport, he didn't do himself any favours. He kept on stuttering. He wasn't a clear communicator at his level, the way he should be. Uh, I think Simon, Simon Jordan, Jordan, Jordan absolutely, rinsed him, didn't he? Absolutely, oh, he got absolutely torn a new one. And r- rightly so. I like Simon for that. He was asking everything what we wanted to know. I mean, what are you going to do? do he, he could come up with nothing. Yeah. Do you know what? I think he could be involved in something because he hates Golden Sullivan as it is. Can imagine if another investor, then go, imagine how pissed off Jim White would be as well if an investor comes, Simon, can you help us out? Oh, that would be fucking hilarious though, wouldn't it as well? I, I, think, he's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think he's a bit like Alan Sugar. He, he lost a lot of money in football and he just about said, I just came out of it um, with my um, underpants still on, so to speak. But um, I don't think he'll go back into it and... Um, Football, that's what I keep saying. You need a lot of lot of money, and the only clubs that are doing well are the ones that we can say are funded by oil, oil, oil space, yeah. really. And the only yeah. country that I'm waiting for that could come in is Saudi. Saudi Arabia still need they still need a club to match up to UAE. They got the league up and running. I think Aramco's gonna uh, gonna be on, on one or two stock markets around the world soon. And they're trying to shed their human rights um, sort of issue they have around the world. They, they want to turn one of their, they got one or two islands, they want to turn it into Dubai because they want to come out of oil slowly and, and, and diverse a bit. Um, so Saudi's, Saudi Newcastle deal isn't 100% dead yet. They could come back in again and get that over the line. Then would you enough. take them at West Ham, Jazz? I would. I don't like the country. I don't like the way they run. I don't like the mm. region. That's, that's something personal <laughs> to me. But in, they've got oh, truckloads and truckloads of money that, that we need to get us to the Man City level, which I personally want that. I don't care what anyone else thinks. I want to get to that stage, mate. You know, I don't care if I hook or crook. I'm 47 now. I want to I wanna do it. I don't care who they are. All I want to know is that they're transparent. And so that they're, they're funded by, and it's by, their by money. the king. By the king. Yeah, that, that's... And all this like, oh, I want 550. Oh, I'll give you 450. 40. They'll go. They'll, they'll come in at 600. Straight away, so, opening bid, and just get it over the line, you know. So, yes, yes, I would, I would want them in, yeah. Someone on, so, on that level, yeah. So, obviously, you work in the fight. I'm not going to obviously say what you actually do, but you work in the finance sector. Could yeah. you see? I know we failed with the Iceland. Could you see another big bank in the world saying, "I want a bit of, bit of fi- a football club and come in for something like"? Oh, do you reckon it's gone past it now? What, a big bank in terms of collapsing or, or coming into oh, No, football? no, coming, coming into football. No, 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 they, they, they don't do that. What they normally do is you, obviously, when Saudis or someone will take over West Ham, they'll form a new company that'll take over. And under that company, they'll pump in some equity 
and then yeah. they go and borrow some money under that company as well, like a mortgage. That's when the banks will come in. So like you, right, okay. a, yeah. like you, like you and me have a mortgage. A company yeah. normally has a like what they call an RCF, revolving credit facility line, which gets renewed every three to five years. And in that RCF, there's a limit, like an over. Say, say it's a five hundred million or one billion, and then four <laughs> banks will will lend a quarter of that each, and then they're part of the what we call the syndicate. That's how they make right. their money. They, they won't go in right. as a Sometimes they oh, okay. own a few shares. They own a few yeah. shares in that company, but that company will be like a Saudi. That they'll form it, and then the banks will supply the the money underneath. Yeah, right. Uh, we've talked about this for half an hour. What I want to do, we, we've sort of suggested this, didn't we, gents? We'll, 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 we'll probably pick another subject. But does anyone in the chat or want to talk about something? Just put a question in, and we'll just do random topics and talk about that. This is we just thought this is this. As much as I love Jimmy Bullard, but we thought we'll get you prepared for Jimmy Bullard and your bacon sandwich and uh, <laughs> and stuff like that. And we just talk about and because we're previewing the Leicester game tomorrow, so we probably we may touch on that for a couple of minutes if a question in lights on that. But we just thought we'd like to get our subscribers. And once again, thanks for everyone. We're up to seven hundred and three subscribers now, mm. so another another big jump. So uh, thank you to everyone. Um, we're we're climbing very yeah. very rapidly at the moment. Share, share us if you wouldn't mind share us onto your social media platforms why not you know get if if we could ask you to do that that would be absolutely marvelous and uh get the subscribers up to 800 by i don't know end of september. Really joking no end of, se end of september and then we're going to have nice. from the end of end of september till christmas to try and get to the thousand that's what i want yeah a thousand by the Ouch. end of the year would be a nice target and then we could have a big really... big massive party when we get to a thousand subscribers a big massive that party a... Either in, either in your bar or in Duke's pub, I'm guessing. Uh, well, maybe either, either. Jerseys, I mean, look how well stocked his is, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if uh, anyone re read Milenkovic's comments last night. He came out with an interview since all no. this has gone on. He basically, Go as on. we all know, has signed a new deal for Fiorentina for another, what, yes. year and a half, two years. And mm. he and obviously he said, I love it here. He goes, I never mm. wanted to go anywhere else. I was linked with a lot of clubs, but I myself, Never said I want to go. Um, and I remained a professional throughout what was going on. And that's that's what he said. So it looks like um, one or two clubs who wanted him just could not get the deal over the line, really. And uh, the, the only argument I've got is that it went on for a whole month, I reckon, you know. And we should learn how to move on quicker than we do. I know sometimes at the end you can twist their arm. and But I think the way you do it is you, you do it for for a little bit, for about a week, you move on, and then if there's still room with a few days to go in the window, that's when you can go back in for the player, but I think we'd wasted too much time for that guy, and um, it is very odd, I mean, I follow the Italian league a little bit, and Fiorentina are, yes, we know the name, they're established, they've been around, but they're never one of the, the big, big clubs that we're used to, you know, and I'm, I'm just surprised how he himself um which a lot of players do, hasn't half forced to move away. It's just really odd. Really, really odd situation that he's gone back there. It's weird. Oh, no. It, 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 I think it could be the one what, one what got away, but I still think Phillips from Liverpool is the one what we're going to get over the line. No, I'm worried about that because Liverpool at the moment are not really spending anything and I can't see them. Apart from Origi, they want to push Origi out, but... Um, there's all these rumours in the back still that Mbappe with Liverpool. You don't know. Liverpool might pull something out out of the blue because they've been quiet. And I don't know what they're thinking. They just might. A lot of teams are looking at how they start in the Premiership, you know. So they've started well like us. And and I know, listen, I'm not even thinking that way. But I don't want the board thinking that because we've started well or certainly the manager that we don't need anyone. So that's one thing to think about that we, we, we do all know that we need someone. And... Um, I don't know if anyone saw the David Moyes um, press conference in detail, but it looks like he said things will happen. He believes things will happen. So, yeah, that's a good sign. But um, also, I'm beginning to hear odd things here and there that Sullivan, through his own channels, um, like the Claret and Hugh, he's trying to put out there that um, David didn't give him a list until after the Euros, that he changed his mind while the Milenkovic talks are still going on. So there's still still a little bit of, so, so yeah. with regards to Milenkovic, what I've heard is David Moyes wanted him, but because of the faffing around, 
he, he was convinced that Milenkovic, like what you said, Jazz, he didn't want to move. And which I understand that for now. If, if nothing's got getting over the line and they don't want to move, you don't want that player at the club. You don't want a player who's not going to put in 100% every game. And we don't know him personally, but I don't want people like that at my club. Well, imagine David asking when these things started a month ago that um, he said, Mr. Sullivan, is the deal done yet? Oh, David Moyes, oh, it'll be done. Give me another day. We're nearly there. And this carries on for three and a half, four weeks. And David's like, without swearing, what the hell's going on here? I don't want him then. If you can't get the deal over the line or convince the player to come to our club, I don't want him. So that's what's happened. Sullivan just couldn't get the deal over the line, which Moyes, because Moyes wants him in, wants him to join the training sessions, you know, describe how he wants to play the game. And the guy would have been, I believe he would have been in that team against Newcastle if we'd signed him two weeks ago. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I think was happening. I'm on David Moyes' side as usual. I, I think one, that's the right one thing, thing I'll do. say... The one thing I'll say is that we've it's be careful what you wish for in a way, you know, because for ages we've been turning around and saying that Sullivan's getting too involved in transfer dealings and keep your nose out, Mr. Sullivan, let the manager do this sort of like the hiring and the firing as far as the playing staff's concerned. And it appears that that's exactly what's happened with Milenkovic, if the story is to be believed. So we've got what we wanted. Yeah, but the problem is because we don't have a director of football at the moment, Sullivan's still responsible for getting those signings over the line in terms of agreeing that all the terms, and he's failing to do that. So the good thing is David has given him a list, so he's only going in for players David endorses. But Sullivan, being how old he is and the way he does things, which are probably 1980s style, he just can't get the deals over the line. Because I don't know who the, who the team is, how many people are involved in... In, in drafting the contracts, getting the thing. I think he's just so slow at it. And we've all seen things the way he does. He doesn't even have a mobile phone, I believe. I mean, how daft is that? And he doesn't venture outside. He's just a bit of a weirdo, you know? He's just, nah. So that's the issue we've got. Hopefully the new chap starts in January and things can begin to move a bit quicker. Then all you'll need from Sullivan is an approval to sign the check, so to speak, really, because mm. the deal will be over the line. So, yeah, he's still involved in it, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Should we um, discuss a, a transfer story? Why not? Oh, surprise yeah. me! Go on, surprise me. I haven't had a look. Yeah. So what's the? Have you heard of, this? This is on the one football app, ladies and gentlemen, on the website Football Fancast. That we are apparent. We've apparently identified Sevilla striker Luke De Jong as a potential oh, yeah, target. I saw that. Fuck you seen me. this? Yeah. 30 yeah. years of age. Uh, he, can't e- yeah. he can't even fucking move. I think he scored like s- seven goals in the last three years or something. I, think it's stupid. <laughs> oh, I literally me. saw I... this before we hit go live and I went, oh, I've got to talk about this. I think I think Craig Dawson scored more goals in Watford and flipping us in that more than him in flipping two years. Absolute shambles. Absolute shambles. You're not um... a fan, I sense. No, I'd rather fucking Nigel De Jong. He's retired. Yeah, yeah, he's a pundit now, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> no, oh. We've got a week today, Gates. How long have we got left? About a week and a few days, haven't we? Uh, a week on it's Tuesday. a week on Tuesday, isn't it? Oh, my yeah. God. What, how are you going to fly people over? I've got my tie. My tie's, my tie's upstairs in, in the drawer already. Yeah. Already for I mean, transfer just, deadline Just day looking here... Porch. Do you know what his record is for Sevilla? Go on. In all in all competitions, all mm. matches, he's played ninety four matches. Yeah. Nineteen goals. That's mm. not exactly not exactly great, is it? I mean, no. ah, talking talking of strikers, I was watching Friday Night Pie and loved that. Um, Origi got mentioned again last night on there. And and then Dan was like, "Oh, his goal scoring record's not that great." Yeah, he's so good, I divide uh, so, so I divided it by minutes plays and goal mm. scores. Mm. He's averaging a goal every game if he played. Yes, so he played go. like six thousand yeah. six thousand five hundred minutes for Liverpool. That's always played and scored thirty four goals. That's a goal every one hundred and eighty one minutes. That's yeah. his average goals if you do minutes to goals. Marigi's yeah. uh, the one. Maybe we've had a word and Liverpool are saying you can have him, but we're just waiting for something to happen. So I think we're waiting on a couple of players that will get released with one or two days to go. So I think we definitely have agreed things with players, I think, in the back. But we're just waiting for something else to happen before our move happens. And we're hoping that Tottenham 
don't come in like that to, to disrupt anything really. And they've started the season well, which I'm not happy about, as you know. Um, so we'll see how things 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 go on, really. Yeah. Right. I know we sort this... of. Oh, go on, Jazz. Sorry. Oh, no. just, okay. You so... seen you seen this one from Gaza, Mohamed Bayo from Claremont. Not a player I'm familiar with. I've never heard of him. Have you boys? Heard yeah, of this one? I, I don't know him, but I, I, I think it was this morning, last night, his name was mentioned. Yeah. Hmm. Just looking here, I've just gone up to Wikipedia. He's 23 years of age, six foot two, forward. He's at Claremont. He's been there basically since his youth in 2004. He first went there. Yeah. And he's uh, he's had a loan spell at Dunkirk, where he got 14 goals in 34 appearances. For Claremont's first bad. team, he's got 25 in 45. And he's got one cap for Guinea, no goals. Okay. Interesting. On, it, on uh... the face of it, on the face of it, potentially half decent. But as I say, I, I'm not an expert in, you know, league earned football, I've got to say. Um, especially uh... I'm not a, 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 an expert in Claremont as a football team. Another thing I noticed is not really West Ham, but good to see Jimenez is back now. He's he's playing ninety minutes. He mm. played last week. He he played in preseason. So yeah, he's 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 one of my um, strikers. I have a lot of respect for. He's a great player, Jimenez. You know, we were yeah. linked with him when he was at Benfica on loan, but we just didn't bring him over the line for one reason or another. So yeah, we were linked, we were linked with flipping Neymar with him years ago. How depressing is that? Well, drug drug was the one that got away under Rhodes' um, time, I think. He wanted him so oh, much, God, didn't he? Yeah, nearly he wanted him. In. Yeah, yeah. What could have happened? But yeah. but when you look about it, I still think Edward's going to come in. If it's not Edward, it'll be Origi. Edward was uh, linked again yesterday, uh, Marzi. I read that. His name has come up. Was he? he? He himself is putting the feelers out there that he wants to move. Yeah, I think I think I've, I, I think... He's he's not Antonio, but he's uh, like Origi is a close mole to him. You, you, I, I remember I, I can't say I sit there and watch SPL because I fucking fall asleep most of the time. But when I, I watched Celtic Rangers and that, a couple of years ago when under Rogers, he was a difference in them games. It, it was Morelos versus Edward, but Edward come out on top. Yeah, the problem we've got the Harry Kane. <laughs> We've got the Harry Kane problem where when Antonio is fit, he, he is really, really good. And then what do we do? That's the issue. There's a new signing. We tell him, mate, you've got to wait until he's injured, which will happen. I mean, it's not really a good, good thing to say, trying to get a player in, is it? I mean, what do you... No, could would... they play together though, Jazz? No, not Davey. I don't think, I don't think Davey's going to do that. He likes to have a good foundation. What about, what about, what about converting Antonio back out, back out on the wing? That's what I was thinking. But if Lingard comes in, then that, that gets crowded in that area, doesn't it? That gets crowded. You've got, you got five fighting for three, haven't you? It's not a bad My best thing, mate, Yarmolenko, but... won't be in the squad then, for fuck's sake. No, no one's going to give him the money he's on. That's, and, he's like, and he looked good in that. Um, was it under 23 I saw? He, he looked good in that. Um, yeah, he looked sharp since the Euros. Uh, I don't know what's changed in him, but hopefully he keeps that going and we keep mi minimum injuries. But, yeah, I'm just... I'm quite quite excited for the window because I'm I'm shocked that it's not. I only can't us. wait for. I, I literally I'm going to be. I can't wait for transfer deadline day. Even he's got the got his time ready. I I, yeah. I I literally can't. It's like not even just West Ham signings. I just think there's going to be so many transfers what are not expected. I still think Kane will go on deadline day. I think that will that will be like. Do you remember Berbatov at Man United going to Man United all them years ago? No, he can't think, go deadline day because Tottenham need the money now, don't they? Really. Oh, a good news! Something funny. Romero, the guy they signed, he cool. apparently was so poor at that um, um, Euro cool. European game. They they were like, "Oh, we're not too." And like he goes, "Early days," but they weren't sure about him. He was, it was kind of a six out of ten. So I was giggling, giggling away, listening to that. Really, so I know they put a lot of money in for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just yeah, Eamon's just saying about. 19 goals in 100 appearances. I mean, it, it, it's statistics. It depends upon which way you want to look at it. I mean, probably a lot of those 100 appearances have been yeah. five minutes here, 10 minutes there, in, in all fairness. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like you said, Miles, yeah. you know, if you go yeah. minutes per yeah. goal, it starts to look yeah. a little bit more respectable, doesn't it? I mean, it depends upon yeah. what is your metric. You know, do you just purely go on 19 goals, 100 appearances, or do you look at it minutes played and goals scored That's in that time? 
I think what you've got to do, Gates, if you go back and looking three, four, five years, what I would do, I'd look at the, the, I'd look at the championship, and if you look at the top three goal scorers last four years in the championship, if you buy them before the season starts, you usually got an idea who's going to be up there in the top score. You, you can save yourself a lot of money, and there's no risk anymore. You know, we used to say, like, okay, if you're, if you're in a top three championship scorer, you get promoted to premiership, I don't think there's a risk anymore. Who, 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 was that, who was that fat bloke who played for Leeds, a striker and that, of Cardiff or whatever, paid a fortune for him, and he flopped in the uh, Premier League? Oh, Ross McCormack. Remember him, the bell end. Oh, he was the top he, goal he, scorer. He, he came from, from Villa, didn't he, I think, didn't he? Yeah. No, Brentford, he, he, Brentford. Was it Brentford? Uh, no, he played for Leeds, and then he went made the big big jump. Kemp will probably tell us. I think Everyone was, He was a top goal scorer for like four or five seasons, and then someone paid mm. a fortune for him. He didn't even last a season. He went straight back down again. He was another one. I think you got to you got to guess and you got to look at all the clubs and find out who who's playing up front for them and who's going to be in that top three. Who's going to go up and just grab them now before they want the thirty, forty, fifty million? So like the Ivan Tonys, the Armstrongs, the Mopes, the Watkins. You got to buy them now before they get mm. promoted because then we ain't we don't obviously want to pay the money anymore. Do we? So yeah, I was having a quick look. Just just have a look who's up front for QPR. Have a look at who, who you know. Well, Brentford are up already now, but someone else who's going to be up there coming up again. There's got to be something out there. You know, if you don't, if you haven't got the money to to buy something with bigger than you, you got to take a bit of a risk. I think we're into that stage of the window now, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. I'd... But but we're I, not the I, I am club. It's, it's been quiet, isn't it? We're not the only club. A lot of clubs haven't yeah. done much. Yeah, it's weird. That's that's the thing that kind of gives me a little bit of solace, if you will that I don't really look at too many other clubs of our, in our sort of like realm. I mean, obviously you've got, you know, the, the sort of like the, t- the the money top six. I know we were finished in the top six last season, but I'm talking in terms of money. Um, we're not in that bracket. I mean, so I sort of put them to one side and I sort of look at us against a comparative size clubs, if you will, in terms of our finances. And I don't really see that there's been too much in the ways of an, in net spending from from their side of things. So it kind of gives me a little bit of hope, if you will, that I'm... maybe we're not as far behind the, the yeah. sort of like the others. I and that may be false hope, guys. And the thing is, I, I, being a West Ham fan, I know that it's the hope that kills you. Yeah, I am shocked to what's going on at Arsenal, everyone. I am shocked. What is the? How are they what... doing that? But who are they buying in like that? Ramsdale, 26 million. Are you serious? Is he better than Leno or whatever you've got? And that Brighton guy, he didn't really cover himself in glory against Brentford, I heard. That's 75 million on them two. I'll te- mm. um, they're, they're the highest spenders, 140 million so far. Really bringing anything in what, who have they garden. sold? No, no one. one. No one. David that's that's my point. Three, how, are they, how are they doing this? And they've got no European football. They got really and they're spending, what, 130, 150 million pound on players, no one do- thus far, to my knowledge, has been sold for any significant fees. How how does this stack up with all the financial fair play? I mean, I'd I'd, I'd love to know how they're they're getting round it. I think it's the Pellegrini season for Arsenal. They're giving it one final push up, mm. and then he's, and Cranky has got the dusty checkbook out. But apart from Odegaard, whatever they're bringing in, I'm like, whoa. Are you paying that much money for people like that? Fifty million on that Brighton centre. Oh, come on, mad, isn't it? You can spend money. And Ramsdale, if he'd come to West Ham, we would have gone nuts. I didn't want that guy out of club. Not for twenty six. He's been relegated. It's going to be relegated three years in a row. Bless him. Imagine if they got relegated. Ah, oh, uh, yeah, they did sell Willock for thirty million, but. That's nah, still what a hundred million that, pound net nah, spend, isn't it? Thereabouts. It? It's about twenty. That was it wasn't thirty. About twenty something. Yeah. And he was good. even so. Why are, you selling, why are you selling someone who's good and bringing in what you are? It's just odd. So you're not a fan of their, their incomings, then, Jazz? Oh no way! I'm 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 pretty pleased. No, not Ramsdale. No way. And and I would not spend fifty million on a Brighton centre. He, he, I'm not being funny. Know. He is proper fucking shit, isn't he? Like Sheffield United thought they got the best. Re- yeah, they got the perfect replacement after Henderson, and I just remember some Sheffield United fan like 
literally, I, I can't remember, it was on a stream or something, and he's just sitting there like that after like the first three games because of Rams, the only man that cold. What, 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 really? the fans are saying, what the fans are saying that I tell you, you got rid of Martinez last season, you punker, and then 20 million, and now you're buying in Ramsdale, who's worse than Martinez at double the fee, and then also, yeah, you just don't understand what he's doing, really. It's just weird. I don't get it, mate. I don't know what's going on at that club. And then they're trying to flog. We might end up with Lacazette, mate. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. They need would to get rid of him? them too. Yeah, yeah, Lacazette all day long. Not, not about him. Yeah, yeah, 28. I'll take him. He's a good player. Penalty taker. I think as well, he's I 30 now. I think he's 30, but he's still you'll got a couple two, of years. Yeah, you'll get two years out of him, definitely. He's about a one in three striker, isn't he? He's, he's, his record averages yeah. out around about one in three. Aubameyang's about one in two and a bit. So I know he's the he's the one that's the more prolific of the two, but yeah, Bami Yang's two Bami years Yang. older and he's gonna cost yeah. an awful lot more money both in terms of the transfer fee and in terms of his wages. So I think I personally yeah. and I did a stream of, and you know this, I I did a stream a couple of weeks back and I floated the idea about Lacazette coming to the London Stadium and I, I still wouldn't I absolutely would not turn my nose up at him. I really wouldn't. Aubameyang is not the right character we want in our club. He's a bit moody. No, Lac- Lacazette he's... I'd take, though. Lacazette's a good lad, I think. he's, And we've got a few French players there already. So, yeah, we couldn't get him. Batshuayi's gone already, isn't he? <laughs> he's gone on loan somewhere, isn't he? So... Yeah, but did you, did, you, did you see their technique, what Chelsea do? Did you watch the Hammers yeah. chat? With Dom- nah. yes. so, so, basically, so, basically, what they do, Chelsea is they send the players out on loan, but make them sign an extension on their contract if they've got like a year or two years left. That's what Bashawai's done. He's on his last year, so they've made him sign a new contract and loan him out again so they can't get him for cheaper. That's that, that's can, that I, can I ask your opinion on that? Because I, I don't understand. See, maybe I'm missing something, but let's just put yourself in the... And it makes absolute sense from the club's point of view because you send them out on loan, you get them to sign a year's extension first so that when that loan is finished, that player's inherent value, unless they've had an injury or a bad loss of form, shouldn't have diminished significantly. So I understand from a business point of view why the club would be keen to get the player to sign that extension. But why would the player? The, the player's probably sort of like, you know, in, in the case of Batshuayi, what's his medium to long-term future at Chelsea Football Club? He hasn't yeah, got they, one. They, 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 they offer him pay rises. A huge salary. That's what they do. They give him more money. But to they're sign. tied to a club that they're. I, I, I don't know. You know what? Uh, I, I don't know. I just but but money talks, go. Kate. See, that's that, that's like it's not just football. We could say, say for example, me as a contractor, yeah, because I'm I, I work for one company, but I'm contracted to work for other people. That's what my boss does. But that's hmm. like me going, yeah, you need to go over there. You need to travel an extra hour to work every day, but. I'll give you an extra 30 grand a year. I'll do it. Mm. Do you see yeah, what I mean? It's, uh... Yeah, it's it's what it is. It's hard to... Because for Batshuayi to move, he's got to agree to reasonable terms and then the club to please Chelsea the offer and it's not happening. That's the problem at the moment. Yeah, Either... yeah see, see yeah. what he would do, Jazz, as well, is they'll offer him more money yeah. because they know when they send him, he's got to take a pay cut. So they're giving him the yeah. money in advance. So what Chelsea do is they go after every youngster there is. Between them and Man City, they probably got 70% of the young. Yeah, exactly, Jazz. I know exactly what you mean. Exactly. I couldn't have put it better myself, Jess. No, at uh, one point, died. two years ago, Chelsea had 50 players out on loan. 50 players. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? I think, yes, I think last season, they, I think I counted, they had about 35, something like that. And a, lot of them, you've never, you've, a lot of them have never even kicked a ball for the first team. Yeah, what I was, what I was saying is, yeah, they, they, they go up and down the country getting the, all the players under contract. And then what they do is they, they're basically goods for them to sell on and make a profit. That's what, what they try to do, really. And um, it kind of works for them. It's, I mean, it's like a normal company. You're just an employee number to them. Hmm. Yeah. And sooner or later, I mean, okay, they're waiting for the Loftus Cheek to eventually move on. So they're not worried if he doesn't move on again. They know at some point someone's going to grab him. For, that's a 25 million asset for, for Chelsea and Hudson Adoy and a few others. So it's like a. Machine. I told you about that boy, though, didn't I? Hudson Adoy. 180 grand a week he's on. He's 20 years of age. He's been on it for the last two years. 
hundred to stop him going by Munich. That's that's what they done. Yeah. Hundred and eighty. How long has he got week. left? Twenty twenty four. It runs out. <laughs> Signed a five or six year deal. He's not really playing much football, is he? He's trying to convert him as a wing back, aren't they? Don't Here's a question. Opinion. This one. This one's interesting. This one's just popped in. Um, can we bung Lingard six seven million so he buys out his own contract so we sign him on a free? I did wonder because I I did think that can't players who have entered the last year of their contract buy it out? No, in January. In, in, in January, you can agree a free transfer. No, I know, but I I I seem to remember, and I don't know whether it's changed or whatever. But I believe that when you enter the last year of your contract at a club, a player can offer to buy their own contract out from the club and yeah, become and a free agent year, really? twelve months ahead. And Pepe's in his last year. Mm. Really? Oh wow! Yeah, he is. I don't think we're getting him next season. No, but that's a risk for PSG, isn't it? Whoa! Hmm. Wow, I didn't realise that. How silly of them. I, I, I don't know about he hasn't got to finish. He, he can't score at the end. Euros is pretty poor. Champions League, when they need him, he's, he has misses so many chances. He's, he's got a bit. He has had a few injuries the last couple he's, of years. He's as well. just off it, mate. He's been off it for a year and a bit. I used to love that guy, but there's just something not... Okay, he, he, he darts around like a... You know, like seeing how fast he is, but once he's there, that final bit you need doing, he just messes it all up. Neymar doesn't impress me a lot of the time. So, I mean, Messi, yeah, you can rely on Messi. Did you see that five aside team that had in training the other week, though? That was fucking ridiculous. Probably can't get the ball that, off them. Yeah. They had Messi and Bappe, Neymar, Di Maria, Verratti, and some centre half, and, and Donna Runa in goal. And like, it's been team, oh. they couldn't get the ball off him. It was ridiculous. I love that goalie. That goalkeeper was top class. Donna, the, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You imagine rocking up to your local goals and they stood there waiting to play a five aside against you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you just turn around and walk away, wouldn't you? Just go, yeah, you keep it. We- that's Imagine another- how many nutmegs yeah. you'll get done by. Yeah. Oh, brutal. But that's Absolutely another thing, brutal. AC Milan. I mean, I find I find it a bit silly of AC Milan, and I think a bit naughty of the goalkeeper not to do it in a way where the club got something. Perhaps he's been at AC Milan since he was a kid, and for them mm. not to get anything. What's his street value? A lot. It's a lot. You know, he's, he's, I, 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 think, never- I think he's... I think- I think his value, what they rated him, was like 70, 80 million. Yeah, and I've never seen a kid that age look so natural and comfortable in the big stage as a goalkeeper. Mm. He's, he's just going to be amazing for them. And they do have a reputation for bringing really good goalkeepers, as we know, really. So, yeah, mm. a bit, bit felt sorry for a little bit of AC Milan. They got nothing for him, but there you go. <laughs> this one's just come in from Eamon. Is there anybody decent left for us to sign? Most of the players we were supposedly in for have already moved on. And this is the thing that kind of worries me, is that we're going to be sort of like deadline day. And it's it's like when you sort of walk into a supermarket 20 minutes before they're about to close and the shelves are empty and you've got the bargain bucket there that's full of all the stuff that's about to go off. That, oh, that's don't. pretty much no, weird no, the territory we're heading yeah. towards, isn't it? No, no, you've got, you've got Loftus-Cheek, you've got Ross Barkley, you've got David Luiz, you've got Sandenberg. You've got Mitrovic, you've got Seema. But a lot there. of these clubs are going to know that we're basically bricking it. And the price is probably going to be jacked up as a result, isn't it? It is what it is. I mean, like I said, Sullivan's been owner of our club for a long time. And he knows from experience, he should know what to expect. But looks like he doesn't learn, you know. That's do you thing. think, realist- I can't see it happening, but do you think if we went in, Thirty-five million for Brentford for Tony, they would accept. I don't think Tony no. would come. I don't think Tony would come. No, I don't think he'll agree. Ivan Tony. Because I think if they sold Tony, in my opinion, any chance of them surviving in the Premier League beyond this season is gone. Well, I know Norwich sold that guy to Villa, which was surprising, wasn't it? Thirty-three million. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I reckon. I reckon we should be on their door, going. If you get relegated, we get first dibs. <laughs> yeah, I think no one... Yeah, you can't trust anyone in football anymore with those kind of gentleman agreements and things no. like that. I mean, like you said, the Lingard, if he could believe a footballer, he could say, OK, I'll sign for you for free in January. And then, obviously, Sullivan will say, yes, David, can you just do that him? And, you know, until December, Jan? But no player's going to commit to that, you know? Uh, 
Right. Well, we're coming up to an hour chat, so we're going to end it there, I think. Um, just to say to you guys that are watching live, please uh, don't forget, drop a like on the stream, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and make sure you hit the bell icon to be notified of any new content as and when it is uploaded to the channel. Miles E, I'm going to let you do this one just to mix it up a little bit. Okay. Over to you. Yeah, so if, if anyone who doesn't know, um, here at Forge from Iron, we're a huge supporter of Isla Caton. Um, we've, in my opinion, I think, I'm not saying that other channels haven't, but we've raised quite a lot of money for, for her especially. If anyone doesn't know, she's uh, six. She's six now. Mm, believe so, yeah. So, yeah, six-year-old girl uh, fighting neuroblastoma. Um, if anyone hasn't, you can give her a follow as well on um, Isla's Fight um, and also on Facebook where her mum, Nicola, uh, gives us updates. Uh, as you can see, she, she had a birthday party this week, so she, she, she's very happy in herself, but obviously every day that goes by w without the help from us, it's... Uh, huge risk on her life and she's she's a very ama amazing young girl who fights every day and she she doesn't let what's going on in her life affect her um we've come up with some ideas to to, to help uh, raise some money unfortunately circumstances out of our control we couldn't have the fundraiser what we was going to do to raise some money for uh selling idols toys but we'll keep we'll give you an update on that but yeah she's she's fighting and all I ask you to do is just, it's in the description below. Even if you cannot donate, just keep making people aware. I don't care even if it's someone who you ain't spoke to in five years. If, if someone could make a difference on on this girl's life. So if, if you have, and if you could, just please share again. That would be a huge help to her. Yeah, I endorse, I endorse that 100%, as does Jazz, I'm sure. Um so guys, I'm, I'm going to end it there. I'm going to hit end broadcast. Um, thank you, Jazz. Thank you, Milesy, for joining us on this pilot episode. And hopefully you guys in the chat have enjoyed it. And who knows, if, if we think that this has got a little bit of legs and it's gained a little bit of traction, we might be might be back this time next week. Who knows? Who knows? But thanks That'll for be the build-up for the gentlemen. Palace game. That'll be the build-up. Yeah. Pan We've got, got that tomorrow at 8 o'clock, I believe. In yeah, the yeah, the Leicester, the, yeah, the Leicester game, yeah, tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, next week is, is yeah, sorry, that's the Leicester game, yeah. Um, so, yeah, the uh, I'm not too sure what we're going to do next Saturday because, obviously, next Saturday, as you say, is the Palace game. So, I'm going to be going to the game. Or we'll, we'll sort something out. We, we do what we do all the time. We make it up as we go along, isn't it, chaps? Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Mosey, <laughs> what are we, mate? We're fucking massive, people. We're massive. Absolutely. <laughs> and from Jazz and myself, you're going to get the usual. Yeah, come on, you irons. Come, come on, on, you irons. <laughs> Guys, have yourselves a great weekend. Thanks for joining me.